Hey, what's up guys? So there's been a lot of talk, a lot of rumors regarding the 2018 iPad Pros and I wanted to bring that all together into one video and cover the final rumors and leaks before this device launches later this month, supposedly. So let's go ahead and cover all of that. And by the way, I just wanted to mention, so I did the giveaway yesterday and the guy that won the AirPods, I literally had no way of contacting you. So if you're watching this, go check your SoundCloud. That was literally the only way I could uh, find to contact you. So if that doesn't get claimed, I'm gonna redraw for that. All right, so I just wanted to say that that the 2018 iPad Pro is one of my most anticipated devices. And that's second to the Apple Watch Series 4. This thing, I still gotta do a review on it, but by far one of the best Apple products in the last five years, period. And uh, the iPad Pro is going to be an absolute beast. One of the biggest jumps in processing power ever for an Apple product. It's gonna look futuristic. It'll be a completely revamped interface user-wise if you're coming from a really old iPad. So it's gonna be a huge upgrade for everybody, even for the 10.5 inch models, it's gonna be a very, very big difference. So let's start covering what's new and what's different. All right, so I wanna start with some leaked CAD files from this slash leaks post, and it gives us an actual full look at the full render of this design. And it's actually very similar, in fact, identical to the one that was shared earlier by OnLeaks. It does have that more squared, rough look, much like an iPhone 5, iPhone 5S series, which I do like. It just seems strange for Apple to go into that design direction. It's almost like they're going backwards. They've all been about curves, but now they're going back to the jagged edges. So I personally do like it. It's gonna feel so sleek. And I think that it will be more comfortable to hold because when you have a curved device and it's so thin and so sleek with such thin bezels, you, know, you need a little bit more to hang on to and that little chunk, that square edge will give you that something to hold on to. So I do like that. And uh, this basically does confirm that that design is here to stay. It looks absolutely incredible with the full screen display thing. I wonder if we'll ever reach a future where there are no bezels at all and it's just all screen. It would be uncomfortable but would it look futuristic in something out of a sci-fi movie? Yes, it would. Uh, but anyways, there is that, there's that design and it does show us the actual uh, schematics, how thin it'll be. It does say 5.86 millimeters. So compared to the current 10.5 inch at 6.1 millimeters, it's 0.2 millimeters thinner and in a smaller package in general. So you're getting the same size display just in overall smaller iPad in general. It looks amazing. It's gonna be a smaller form factor all around and this goes for the larger 12.9 version as well. So this is gonna be an 11 inch iPad, but the screen size should remain the same as the actual resolution has leaked. And it's the same resolution as the 10.5 inch iPad and the current 12.9 inch. So yes, the iPads will be shrinking, but the actual screen size and screen resolutions will be staying the same. And also this Twitter leaker does confirm that the thickness will be 5.9 millimeters. That's rounded from 5.86. And because of that thickness, Apple will not be able to place a headphone jack inside of this device. So apparently, it might not have anything to do with Apple not wanting this technology in the iPad at all. They literally physically could not fit in a headphone jack if they tried at 5.9 millimeters. I personally think that they removed it just to match the iPhones so that none of them will have it. It'll be more of an even design. You'll have to use an adapter with it. And eventually the MacBooks might get rid of it as well, just for it to be more even and synchronized across all of the devices. I'm sure that physically they could have fitted in, but they didn't want to for the principle alone. And developer Rambo does confirm that there will be no Face ID notch up top because yes, these new iPads will be replacing the home button with the Face ID system. And thankfully there will not be that ugly notch up top. That's because of the bezel. Apple has more room around the iPad to hide the Face ID system. And it's gonna look very nice not having one. On the iPhone, understandably, there's no room to you know hide that, place it somewhere else. So Apple has to have a notch. Eventually they'll make it better to where they don't need one. But for now they do on the iPhone. On the iPads, they will not. And developer Rambo does also confirm that horizontal Face ID will be having happening on this new iPad. So you'll be able to unlock it in both you know, vertical and horizontal orientation. But unfortunately, due to an alignment issue, you know, just the way that these are made in the new iPads, developer Steve Trotton Smith did share earlier that he found code in iOS 12.1 that suggested that this is happening as well. But unfortunately, it cannot be ported to an iPhone with a software update because of that alignment issue. So yes, it'll be happening on the iPads and maybe in the future on the new iPhones, Apple will add it in as well, but it will not be happening on the 10s. Max, but horizontal face ID is a great idea. I think especially on an iPad, it does make sense because you don't wanna be rotating it every single time to unlock it. You know, many apps take advantage of that horizontal orientation, in fact, like all of them. So it'll definitely be a very great convenience thing to have on the new iPads. And while wow, that CPU, it's been confirmed to be an Apple A12X, code name of Vortex, and it's jumping from an Apple A10X. So power-wise, this could be one of the biggest jumps in performance. The iPod Touch went from the A5 to the Apple A8, so 
that was a huge jump, but uh, transistor wise, just overall power wise, this might be the biggest. And the Apple A12X will be a heavier version of the Apple A12. There will be more transistors. It'll be more performance oriented and for a larger display like the iPad. So this thing is gonna be an absolute beast. I cannot wait to see the numbers and it could finally surpass some high-end laptops as well. Developer Rambo shared some news regarding an Apple Pencil 2. So Apple is updating this thing sooner than later uh, to go alongside with this new iPad and it's gonna have a new pairing process. It'll have the W2 chip inside likely. So much like AirPods, you open them up, place them right next to the iPhone and they're paired instantly. So same thing will happen with the iPads. If you know right now with the Apple Pencil, it's kind of inconvenient. You have to stick it into the port just to pair it, just to charge it. And I'm always afraid that I'm gonna nudge it and like break it off completely or break my port. Uh, so hopefully that could help a little bit, but you'll still have to charge it using the same method unless they release a separate charger for it. So Apple Pencil 2. It's possible that there could be some new features. Uh, it was rumored earlier that Apple was working on software features with the Apple Pencil, uh, some new ones specifically for the iPad. So that could come alongside it as well, but it's unknown if this Apple Pencil 2 will have backwards compatibility with the older iPads. So that is unknown. And while we're on the topic of wireless accessories, AirPods 2 have leaked via Venya Geskin, and he shared this image, a very fuzzy, of course, image of the leaked packaging, which proved to be fake. But he did give some details that made me quite excited for this product. He said it would have an Apple W3 chip, uh, unknown what that could be if Apple were to release it, possibly more range, faster pairing even. Also that it would have better sound and it would have the always on Hey Siri feature. So that's fake, uh, but I would eventually like to see those. Those are rumored for 2019. Also developer Rambo does confirm that the smart connector is being relocated to the back. And this is possibly because of Face ID. As rumored earlier, you might have to use your device with a smart keyboard in this vertical orientation now just because of that, because Face ID, there would be some sort of inconsistencies there. We'll see, uh, but that is being relocated to the back for sure. And here's where things get really interesting. Yes, Apple will be adding a USB-C port. Developer Rambo does confirm this, and that's very, very unusual for Apple. They've been sticking with Lightning for so long, but there's a reason that they're going to USB-C on the iPad. Now that it's powerful enough to actually power an external display to drive it, Apple is finally adding that functionality into the new iPad via USB-C. So the rumor is you'll be able to power a 4K display from the iPad, and not only 4K, but 4K HDR at that. You'll also have control over many things such as brightness, resolution, and HDR as well. So imagine an iPad driving a 4K display. That's kind of crazy. With the Apple A12X chip, you'll be able to do that, and of course, with the USB-C. So this could be a precursor to Apple finally adding USB-C to iPhone, but there's really no need for them to do that. I wouldn't put it past them though, but uh, it's unlikely it'll come to the iPhone, but it is coming to the iPad for sure. And prior to an imminent release, Apple has filed a bunch of new iPad models with the Eurasia Economic Commission, just like they did with the Apple Watch Series 4 models before release, so we do know they are coming relatively soon. And as for the actual date when this event could take place, there's word that it'll be right at the very end of October, on October 30th. On October 24th, the only other logical time, uh, Tim Cook is actually going to be in a meeting overseas, so that's unlikely. October 30th stands out as possible date for this event. There have been no leaks regarding that, no actual event invite, so we really don't know, but October is usually when Apple does these events. And what else are we gonna see at these events? So aside from the iPads, which are pretty much the main event, Apple will be updating several other computers, such as the iMacs, the MacBooks, the Mac Mini, and very unlikely, but could we finally see the AirPods wireless charging case and the AirPower charging mat? Uh, you know, Apple's been having so much issues with that one, and they've removed almost all mention of it from their official website, so it leaves people wondering where the heck is it? And I've been wanting it for so long. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous how long it's been taking, but they've been having so many issues with it. So it's a little understandable why they would uh, not hype this thing or promote it in any sort of way. So I'm very excited for that event. It is likely happening on October 30th, give or take a day. Also, something I wanted to mention is the new iPhone XR, which pre-orders are starting here in just about a week. There's a new clear case, the first ever from Apple clear case for an iPhone being promoted in uh, other countries, namely Canada, and here are some pictures of it. it. Looks really cool, but no different from any other clear case that you can get. Prices translate to roughly $40, whereas you can buy this thing probably for $10 or under in a very good quality on Amazon. So it's cool that it's the first one from Apple, but I think it's definitely a little bit overpriced 
overpriced for what you get. All right, guys, so there it is, the 2018 iPad Pros coming here imminently. I'm very excited for them. The redesign, just the huge, huge display, full screen. It's gonna match the iPhone very well. And now that iOS 12 has set up the navigation so well, it's gonna be a really great experience, and uh, I'm very excited for that. So stay tuned for this event. I'll keep you updated every step of the way. Peace.